today my my goal is to teach you the concept of resistors in series and parallel and I'll explain to you what that means but actually I think that you actually Victor you provided an analogy one time that made me think to myself that you understand resistors in parallel not necessarily series yet but you understand that and I'll explain to you what I mean by that but this let me let me tell you this and let me kind of get you excited about this concept first I think I'm going to go into deeply into the analogy of how to solve these resistors in series and par parallel. And these analogies, I'm going to do my best to explain. I'm going to basically spend an hour only covering that topic. So I'm going to cover maybe two thirds of this chapter right now, and I'll finish the last bit, you know, next lecture. But um, what are my thoughts? Oh yeah. Um, what 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 really blew my mind is that. I was, I learned this concept in physics. I learned this concept in electricity when I was learning about electricity. Later on, I took a class on thermodynamics and we were talking about heat flow. And this exact same principle popped up. And I was like, whoa, that's pretty crazy. And then later on, I was helping this guy out because this guy was having trouble in a math class, and I'm not that bad at math, yet, although I'm not that good at math apparently, but I'm not that bad at, at uh, you know, calculus and whatnot. And he was showing me the equations for, like, because um, he was he was majoring in traffic, traffic flow management. That's what his major was. And so he was getting a degree in, like, he wants to be, like, a city planner in traffic flow management. And the exact same equations that I saw in electricity was the ones he needed to learn. So that's what I actually ended up teaching him. I said, well, let's pretend that these cars are actually electrons and here's what's going on. You know what I mean? So I was able to explain something from his field using physics. So that's kind of why I think this is going to be a cool lesson because we're going to talk about things and hopefully it will, it will make a lot of sense to you. Are we cool? Yeah. All right. So what do I mean by resistors in series and what do I mean by resistors in parallel? If you have a circuit, okay, and here's a battery. This is the symbol we use for a battery. Um, I showed you two earlier like that, with just a big line and a small line. It's not a capacitor. If it were a capacitor, they would be the same size, right? But if it's a battery, it would be big, one, big small, one big line, one small line. And usually we can put these batteries together, as in like four batteries that you put in, and so you just kind of connect those. You see what I mean? And that that represents a battery. I guess this could be two AA batteries right here. You know what I mean? And so, first thing we 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 know is okay. A battery represents. It kind of represents like the push or the. Like what's moving these electrons in the first place? What's getting them going? It's pushing them along. Cool. And we call that the um, we call that the EMF. Or it's basically to find the EMF. It's pretty simple. All you do is you add all of the voltages. So it's just it's the voltage of one plus the voltage of two plus the voltage of three, and that's your total EMF. That's your EMF. I think it stands for electromagnetic force. I'm not sure of that. I don't even. I mean, names have never really. I've never cared with, but that's. Yeah, you could totally call it total voltage. I have no idea why you want to call it total voltage, but anyway, that's what EMF is. Cool. Now remember, what was what was the resistance? Resistance is like. Explain to me the resistance. How well, actually, it's it's more the opposite of that is how not well. If it's a, res if it's a, a resistance, it's opposite, opposite proportionality. Yeah, sure, fine. Opposite proportionality. We represent that with a squiggly line. And that analogy of what we're talking about, where we have like a a car going, and then all of a sudden the road gets all squiggly. Yeah. It's like, well, the car kind of gets stuck over there. You know, it, gets, it heats up over there. You know what I mean? So, um, are we cool with that? The, the car goes through here, and then we even have, let's say we have a resistor. So we have a resistor over here, and we have a resistor over here. 
So we have three resistors. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to be able to figure out, okay, if we have R1 and R2 and R3, what we want to do is we want to simplify this circuit. We don't want three resistors. All we want is what if we connected the same battery to the circuit, but we replaced those three resistors with one resistor. From the battery standpoint, this will be the same situation, right? The battery only has eyes right here and right here. It only sees what it goes out and what comes in. And to its, its standpoint, you know, we can replace this as long as we use the correct resistor with this. So let's call this resistor equivalent. Does that make sense to you, Kalana? Yeah. All right, cool. So check this out. Here's what's kind of going down. The, in essence, what, what you have here is how, how do you think R1, R2, and R3 relate to R equivalent? Well, I guess here's what your question, what my question is. is like, if I have a, a hall that has some resistance here, right? And I attach another hall that has some resistance. Remember how I'm talking to you guys about running through a hall with a lot of people? Oh, okay. You know, maybe let's, let's say it's a curvy hall as well. And I attach another hall over here. What would that be the equivalent to? One very long hall that has a lot of resistance. Are we cool? So when we add things in, and this is called adding in series. When we add things in series, it's just R1 plus R2 plus R3. It's just sigma R. No, I'm not even going to write that equation. I'm just going to write R1 plus R2 plus R3. But yes, technically, mathematically, you would write sigma R, because that would be adding up all of the R's. In fact, technically, mathematically speaking, if you were in my class, you would put sigma r i what does that mean initial. no it doesn't mean i in, in stem i was teaching you guys about this index factor right it's kind of like this it's it's kind of like think of uh think of this thing as a um as as like top border bins and and in, in computer programming you oh, have arrays. arrays that have top border bins and we're we're labeling the, the top of our being 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's what the I stands for. So when you when you write this out, and oh, I'm um, showing I'm showing you guys advanced stuff there. because I'm I, I I literally I can pull out my homework and show you my actual homework that I'm doing in like graduate physics so and you'll say, Hey, I recognize some of that. I is the integer by which to count. Yes. I is the integer as which, at which to count to, and this sigma with a little i underneath, sigma with a little i equals zero means start at zero, mm -hmm. count by integers, to whenever you finish. So if we wanted to write this thing over here, we would write sigma i to the, you know, and then put a three up on top, and that would say, okay, this would be r zero plus r one plus r two plus R3, and then we stop, because it says start at zero, go to three. Well, you can tell, have, tell it to count anywhere you want. Usually on computer programming, you start at zero, um, but technically if I want to write what I underlined over here, then I would say, okay, fine, start at I equals one. And, and at R equals three. You see what I mean? No, even on a computer, you could, by default, it goes start at zero. But you could tell it to start at five or ten or whatever you want, you know. Are we cool with that? Does that kind of make sense? But by the way, yeah. you don't need to know this little notation. That's super advanced notation. All I really want you to know is that, like, when you add things in series, you add them up. And it's really that easy. Yeah? All right, good. Now, check this out.
And, and you know, in your textbook, they give you this equation. R equivalent equals sigma R. They didn't put the sub I and the little I and all that kind of stuff. But technically, if they wanted to actually officially be correct, they would say, you know, they would actually put what I, whatever I do. Okay, and so when you add stuff in, in series, you add up their resistance. So let's try it. Let's try a problem. Let's just try it. Go. Right, so let's say we have a circuit. And our circuit is, looks like this. We've got three resistors over here, and we've got a battery attached to it. And apparently the resistor is, a, or the battery is a 24 volt battery. Or maybe it's two 12 volt batteries. And we just put them in series, and so you just add them up. Okay, fine. And then, um, the current is given, oh, okay, the current, I, is equal to 0 0.0320 ohms, okay? It tells us that R1 is 250 ohms, R2 is 150 ohms, because that's what you measure with resistance in. What is R3? That's really what you're asking. They're not asking for the total. Well, they kind of are asking for the total resistance, but what they're really asking for is what is the R3? Is that that zero point? Zero point zero. Or you mean 0.0320 amps. Got it? So we're using the power as the equation. Oh, yeah. 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 So, so the one equation that we know is V equals IR. Voltage is equals I times R. Technically, I guess we should put E equals I R. It's the same thing. Right. We're talking about what's the same as We're talking about the EMF, which is the same thing as voltage, really. It's equal to current times resistance. So we calculate what resistance is. Well, we're, we're given E. Oh, yeah, e is 24 volts. Yeah, yeah. I is whatever. Can I figure out what R is? Sure, sure. How would I do that? I divide both sides by I, and so I have resistance is equal to E over I, which is 24 divided by 0 0.032 is going to give you 7.5 times 10 to the squared ohms, or 750 ohms. Yeah. All right. What is that R? What R did we solve for? The total resistance, the equivalent resistance. What we technically solved for was this. Right? Because the battery just solves so what goes in, or what, the battery just sees what its voltage is and what the current is. The current, right? And so he says, based on this current, there must be a 750 ohm resistor attached to it. But is there a 750 ohm resistor? No, there's 250, 150, so that would be 400 so far. So there's a 350 ohm resistor over here, totaling up to give you 750 ohms. And that's your answer. Are we cool? Yep. Okay. So, what happens is when it crosses a resistor, it loses its pump, it loses its potential. And how do we figure out the potential, the amount of potential that it lost as it crossed this resistor right here? Potential. And potential is very easily calculated. It's just the voltage. What is the voltage loss? So what is the voltage loss across that first resistor R1? Well, V equals IR. So this time, what are you using for R? 250. That says 2. Sorry. All right. So you multiply your your I, which is 0 0.032, by R, which is 250, and you get 8 volts. 
So apparently, you, by going across that resistor, you drop eight volts. Yeah. What about going across this resistor? No, we're, we're calculating how much is dropped. How much is dropped of your voltage? So that's voltage times 150, and so we get 4.8 volts as a drop. No, you're not plugging the 20 in forward for volts. What you're trying to do is you're trying to figure out what V is. Right. So you plug in the I, which is 0.32. And you multiply by uh, 150, and you end up getting 4.8 volts. Yeah, so we've lost 8 volts and we've lost 4.8 volts. What about the volts? Or you just replace the I with something different. You have the I, you know what that is, you want to calculate V, and so you add those in the calculator. And you get the level of voltage that the resistor is currently at. Yeah, so you just plug in the I and you get the level of voltage that the resistor is currently at. Yeah, it is. Well, what do you notice? 8 plus 4.8 plus 11.2. It's 24. Right. And, and so you lost 24 volts. You dropped 24 volts. But guess what? When you go across that battery, what happens? You get 24 volts. So there's your circuit right there. Yeah. So, so the resistance drops down the voltage. Does it have to be. Does it have to drop to zero? What is that? Does it have to drop to zero? It doesn't have to drop to zero. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It has to drop to zero. Because, I mean, if you if you have it drop, like, not to zero, then you have have kind of an option. But right, imagine if you had, like, you just only drop 10.2 volts. And so you'd have, like, one volt left over, and then you would cross that battery, and you go to 26. 25 volts, and then you go 26, and 27, 28. Every time it moves around. Well, then you kind of get something that explodes. Yeah. Well, no, I don't think you've had a scenario that would explode. I just think it's more like a. No, no, it's more like a. Uh, what goes in must come out. Kind of deal. What goes in is added by 24. Boosting it up by 24. Does that make sense? So. But what does stay the same throughout this whole circuit? Current. Yeah, the amps. Exactly. Because I mean, think about this. Like, if this were if this were cars, okay, the cars would be coming in here, and they'd be going through here, and they're coming in at this rate. They'd have to be leaving at the same current, the same flow, even though they get this jumbled up part in the middle. They would have to leave in the, uh, the same flow as was going in, right? Throughout this whole thing, the current has to stay the same because you have the same amount of cars coming in. That same amount of cars has to come out, and it, has to, and it better be going at the same rate. Or else, yeah, you're going to have a backup in your, in your thing. And that's, you know, that doesn't make sense. Like, how does that work? So, like, these cars are coming in, they have to be going out. You know, so they're basically being shoved through this windy path. So, oh, so, so that way we don't get 20 volts into it. It's 20 volts into a Is that why we don't over, overuse voltage? Oh, you're talking about, like, we don't put a, like, this, this uh, lamp up here apparently is rated for 60 watt, or, yeah. Yeah, 60 watt light bulb, and I put in a uh, 100 watt light bulb. Okay. That's a 100 watt light bulb and a 60 watt light bulb. So it work. No, it works. Works fine. You put a, a 100 watt light bulb and a 60 watt light bulb? Yeah. It, How does that power 100 watts? It's just dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. So it, like, this is so not smart. Is that what is that? You're pulling more power. No, no, no. The, amp the amplitude is saying something. Resistance phase. Yeah. The, the transformer actually changes your 
is like strings again. I think that changes your voltage. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's a, yeah. Because because here's here's what what happens. And, and we we talked about how um, we we talked about how like when you have um, a lot of resistance, a high voltage, when you have a high resistance, right? And that will lose a lot of energy through heat, that kind of stuff. So what they do is they they bring down the voltage with electric power. Transfer the energy, and then they bring up, back up the voltage, right? and so you don't lose all of that energy in the wire. It's called small voltage. So when you do it, the well, it brings it up so that you can actually use it, and then it, it, it brings it so that it regulates it to whatever regulates it. No, that's not the whole idea. You can also do it. What we're actually doing is we're doing DC circuits. We're doing direct current circuits. AC circuits are a little bit more confusing. But that's fine. Now, you want to know the crazy thing about AC circuits? We're actually going to do you have a use for that. You guys remember imaginary numbers? Oh, yeah. Why did you hate them? Because uh, the, the cost of money is the square root, which is And you think to yourself, why the hell am I learning this? Why would you make up some kind of crazy stuff like this? If it's imaginary, it's it's given a really bad name. It's given two really bad names: complex and imaginary. Those are terrible names for this thing. But I'm just letting you know they're terrible names, and they actually have an application in AC circuits. But it's like I really exist. I does really exist. It's not in your imagination. I don't know why they call it imaginary numbers. They only call it imaginary numbers because they couldn't imagine them when they were in their way back then. Yeah. Alright. So now let's talk about so resistors and series is pretty easy. Right? Yeah, the same What about this? What if I what if I just Change this diagram a little bit. Oh, yeah. So the parallel is just the whole thing. Well, what if I did this? Do I still have to just add those resistances? Do I add them? Do I divide them? No, they'll add up. Wait. Take the energy, you're going to have to divide. Alright, I have a I have a, simple, I have a simpler question, because you guys saw the equation already. But here's my simpler question, alright? Essentially, this is what I'm going to want, right? I want to figure out what is the equivalent resistance of R1 and R2. All right, here's my question for you. If R1 and R2 are in series, and they're both 100 ohms, what is R equivalent? 200 ohms. You just add them straight. If R1 and R2 are in parallel, and do you guys understand what parallel is? Parallel is, it's kind of like a hallway with two options to go to. It's like a, a T in the road, or a fork in the road. And um, it is, it, it's, it's, it's like a fork in the road, and, but you end up at the same path. So it's almost like, yeah, all roads lead to Rome. Yeah, sure, fine. Let's say you start at Rome. Going along, and then you find a fork in the road. You can go that way, or you can go that way. But then you're going to come back, and then you're on that pathway around, and then you end up at a road. Okay? And then this this path right here is a jaggedy path, and this path right here is a jaggedy path. Here's my question: Is R equivalent? If I were to say, okay, let's replace that, those two jaggedy paths with one, would it be bigger? 
200? Would it be smaller than 200? Would it be smaller than 50? Would you think that it's bigger than 100? This were 100 ohms. And this were 100 ohms. Then my question to you is, if I were to replace this with a equivalent thing, would this be... What do you think, Cody? I, I, I think it's 100 ohms. I think it's smaller. Not 100, because it's 200. Not 200. Oh, there's, yeah. What do you think, Kalena? Do you think it's going to be bigger than 100 at least? We, we, we kind of all agree that it's smaller than 200. Yeah. Do you think yeah. it's going to be bigger or smaller than 100? You think um, he thinks it's going to be a... Victor thinks it's going to be 100. Austin thinks it's going to be smaller than 100. Kalina thinks it's going to be... Smaller. Huh? Smaller? Smaller. Why? Smaller is correct, by the way. Why? Well, it's because... I mean, I, mean, I, I, I want to spend a hard class just looking at this and thinking about it. Because this is a kind of an important concept, and it's not just, I could, I could just tell you the answer. I could just pull it out of my butt and say, do it. But, essentially, I don't want to just tell you the answer. I want you guys to kind of understand it. It's because it's going to take B equals IR. Uh-huh. We're solving for, well, You're looking at the equation, huh? All right, all right, here, I'll tell you what. Because you know what, this actually applies to designing stadiums or designing subways. Okay? Think about it like this. You guys ever been to a New York subway? You have? Is it yeah. crowded? Is it as crowded as it looks? I've been to a Japan subway. I think it's ridiculously crowded. Like, they actually, I've been inside of, like, mosh pits from Metallica, and Japan subways are worse. I'm just letting you know. A little bit less pity, but a lot more people. And they're pretty rude. I mean, like, you think that they're really, like, stuff, you know, like, polite and so that? And like, who's the whole swimming lesson, blah, blah, No, no, they just walk. They just go, right? And they're just like, ugh, all over the place. But anyway, let's, let's pretend that we have a, a subway down here. And here's the street. Okay, and I have a thousand people in that subway, and they try to get over to the street, and they're trying to get as fast as they can. Okay, wow. I know it's ridiculous. And I gave them one path, one path to go through, and then he's going to get really jacked up, right? Yeah. Now, what if I what if I put that path? What if I said, okay, let's add a second path, and they're like, uh, okay, and then, and then the, if, if I say, what if I add a second path, and then the, the construction guys would be like, oh, uh, okay, and then they add a second path, and they put a second path right here. They'll be like, I'd be like, you idiot, you did not help me whatsoever. This made it worse. Because they just put it in series, right? They just added more resistance to the paths. So now... We're going, to, we're going to add a second path, but right here. So you're evenly distributing this the same thing, and the same people are trying to all get to the street, but now there's two open paths, less resistance, and there's still resistance, but there's less in each of them, because there's more... There's less people. Yeah, so you can split it out, but that's why they're smaller. Yes, oh, that's exactly right. it. That makes sense. It's, it's kind of like, and I, I know that Victor understood it at one point when he told me, it's like toll booths. Oh, if I have so yeah, that one. if I have a sh freeway over here and you gotta go across the toll booth, it's, 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 it takes it takes forever. But it's better if you had like seven lanes of toll booths than it would be if you had all seven of those in a row. Like, why would you put seven of those in a row where you would pay like okay, pay 
Yeah. Oh, okay. Pay a dollar, pay a dollar, pay a dollar, pay a dollar. As opposed to go through like seven different lanes, you have a seven dollar charge on each of them. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, it's an electronic one. Yeah, sure. So with this, the energy is coming in, or the voltage is coming in here, and it's just being even going through here where there's less resistance. Both of them. Less resistance. So the, the ohms becomes. The resistance is still equal. The resistance is just divided. Amongst two ohms. Well, if it's equal, if if you actually have an equal 100 ohm resistor on one and 100 ohm resistor on one, I'll tell you what the other one is. It's going to be the equivalent one is if you put a 50 ohm resistor over here. That's the equivalent. Yes. It would be equivalent so as putting a, a 50 ohm right. resistor over there. That's that's what the answer is. But, I mean, I can't tell you that, that that's exactly how to do it, because what if the resistors are different? What if you have a 200 ohm resistor in one of them and a 100 ohm resistor well, in the other? Why is it that there's more resistance when there's more pathways? There is less resistance Wait, when there's more pathways. 100 ohms per... Yeah, yeah. These are equivalent. This battery would kind of see the same thing. This battery would send out its its wires and it would bring its wires back in, right? And it would see the current, right? And it knows its voltage. It doesn't necessarily know what its resistor is connected to, but it says, okay, depending on this voltage and this current that I'm getting, I couldn't conclude that I'm re attached to a 50 ohm resistor. But that might not be the case. You could actually be attached to a 100 ohm resistor and a 100 ohm resistor in parallel. What? And the battery would say, I'm still attached to a 50 ohm resistor. What? So why is it that the less quote unquote traffic it goes through, the higher the resistance? What do you mean the less? Like if we have a, a, a 50 volt battery, yes. we're thinking of round numbers, and we are and it's divided by those two times. Okay. Why is it that? So when we have like a um, like resistor of 100, why is it that when you put it in one path, the resistance is much higher? You're thinking more like crowded, where the resistance is higher if you have just one path instead of two. Um, I think what you're saying is, I, I, I see what your logic is, but what you're saying is this. I hate to say this, Victor, but you're the construction crew that built me this subway. You have subway, and you have street, and I told you, put two paths, and you put them like this. Yes, I would agree with you that that resistance is higher. But if I said, now put, don't put two paths like that, are you crazy? Put two paths, give them two options. So I only need to have two people, you know, half the people go through one side, and half the people go through the other side. Half the people go through one side, half the people go through the other side. Do they ever ask you the resistance that was put together like that? What is that? Oh. Did it? Okay. Uh, I, I'm sorry. Go, go. Ask your question. I, I, I'm sorry. What Victor's question is, but I didn't hear what yours was. Come on, go for it. I was just wondering. They never put the two resistors together like that, right? In parallel or in series? They never put resistors in parallel. No, they do it all the time. Oh, okay. The only two combinations that they really have is to put it in series or in parallel. Or they can put them in series and in parallel in the same circuit. And I'll show you guys how to, how to tackle those, because those are really easy. No, well, they're not bad, at least, okay? Alright. But let's finish this discussion. Because it's important. I, actually, let me answer what Victor's question is, but you're right. You, you go for it. What, what's your thoughts? Are you going to answer this question? Or else? All right, let me answer Victor's question, and then why why is it that this has a hundred ohms and this has a hundred ohms? But when I when I replace it with one path, it would only be a smaller voltage or a smaller resistance of fifty ohms. If you're making one resistor now, if it's equivalent, why wouldn't it get more current? We're only having one resistor. Doesn't make sense if there's a hundred and hundred going into two. That's a resistance. Hundred resistance going in. So you have less resistance. Yes. yes. No, no, no. A higher ohm counts as more resistance. A lower ohm counts as more resistance. It's so it's resistance. Resistance. No, it's not. No, they're the same res resistance. This has the same resistance as that. That's what I'm saying. So 
it's changed. And why is it that? I guess it's kind of like is this. It that even though we have half the people on each hat. Maybe 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 think of it like this. Maybe think of it like this. It's easy to let's let's pretend that these resistances are stairs. Yeah. Because because you kind of get tripped up when you go upstairs. Okay. Um, now let's say this. Let's say, and, and walking up an incline, let's pretend that walking up an incline is no problem. It's easy. Okay? Let's say that you have a... To get to the subway, from the subway to the street, you have to walk up a hundred stairs. Okay? And, and the stupid thing to do, of course, and, and, and maybe I, I don't think that you're stupid, but... Um, I don't want to do this, because I mean, we look at that and that's walking up 200 stairs, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's not what we want. But what we would do is we say, okay, let's walk up 100 stairs on this side. Let's walk up 100 stairs on this side. What I would say to you is putting two paths with 100 stairs each is the same as putting one path with only 50 stairs. Because the one path with 50 stairs is easier to walk up so you can get you know, people through. Oh, there's one. Oh, that makes sense. That, that that are, there's sense. there's less resistance with the 50 stairs. Really? Does this make sense to so you? No, no, wrestle will do this in your head until it makes sense because this is an important concept. So you're saying that because there's fewer people going through the curve, we have to slow them down for the sake of having. We're talking about the stairs being resistance. No, yeah, yeah, we're talking about the stairs being resistance. Because our, what is it, our current has to be the same, right? Yeah. So if we have less, if, do we have to make it harder for the other one? No, we have to make it. Well, if we have a lot of people, we want. I guess, to yeah, we can. If we have less of people, we want to make it harder to, in order to keep the competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, 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 what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the equivalent to resistance. We're trying to find what resistance is equivalent to. Oh, we're not figuring out. See, that's the thing. We're so not trying to figure out the easiest path. We're not trying to fix the problem. Yeah, we're, we're just trying to figure out. We're talking about the subway. We're talking. We're saying that the yes, the, the, the easiest thing would be to short circuit, short, short circuit the circuit and just put a ramp that goes straight. Yeah, no, because when we talk about the subway, right? yeah. we're thinking that the resistance is the amount of people, right? No, 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 the resistance is the amount of stairs. Yeah. The people, the, people, no the people are like the electrons, and them walking is the current. And they're walking at a constant current, so it's not. Oh, no, no, no. That's the current. The people being no, the people are. Oh, oh, I see. In the hallway example, the people were the resistance. You're right, you're right. And that's only when I was talking about how heat does affect the resistance. Because I was talking about mosh pits and walking through. Because I was, I was, I was going down to the atomic level, and I was saying, pretend that the people are atoms in the actual thing. I was thinking that the resistance was a variable, and we were trying to figure out how much it was. Yeah, no, the resistance was constant. We're trying to figure out what the equivalent of it is. So, yeah, I was going to say, like, so now I understand. So with 100 ohms, there's more steps, there's more resistance, but there's two kinds of stuff. With only 50 elves, that one equivalent, that was only, only 50 steps into that resistance. Yeah. Okay. So, I was going to say, if you have a thousand people, then in this one, in the first case, you would have 500 people going through each. Yeah. And in the street. And in the, on the second one, on the second one, you would have all thousand people being put on the steps. That's the amount of steps. Yeah, but on the streets, in the end, it would be the same thing, right? Other people like show sure, up at the same time. Yeah. So how do you figure out? Uh, oh, okay. Well, I'll, I'll show you. I'll tell you. Right. Well, I didn't get it. That was kind of no, no. I know it uses the people. I'm glad it took a while. Um, I think it's important that you guys understand this. All right. I think I might have skipped. A step on how to solve this thing. Um, all right, here, here's here's what we got. Okay. The, if I had a, I'm trying to see what the best way to teach you this is, and I haven't taught this in a while, so I apologize. But I have a question. If I put a 100 step 
path over here. But I put a 200 step path. I don't know why I have an on there. A 200 step path is the red one. What would the what would the um how, would more people go through the hundred or the two hundred? Yeah, you would have more people in the two hundred, but you would also have you would have less people. You would have, have some people in the two hundred. Right, right. So I mean, you have one option of like you can go in the one that has less steps, but you're probably gonna have more friends coming along with you. Or you can go in the one that has more steps, and get your workout, but you'll you know have less, you know less people to compete against. Yeah, that kind of stuff. But the amount of flow that goes in has to be what? If I had a thousand people hiking through here, then if if you know so many people went in this path and so many people went in this path, my question is. How many people would pipe out of the street? It would have to be the same current. So, oh yeah, so we just relate the people's IR and then set IP percentage. Does this make sense to you? Well, I understand that a thousand are going to make because your thousand going in, a thousand coming out, but they, well, they wouldn't all come at the same exact time, would they? Well, I mean, they would. They, they would. They, you would have a current here, so we'll call this I1. Oh, because it's only current. And you'll have a current here, we'll call this I2. And I1 doesn't equal I2. In fact, I think that I1 is bigger than I2. The current going into I1 is going to, you know, there's less resistance, more people are going to choose it. The end amplitude will be the same. Right, but the end, in the end, I1 plus I2 is going to have to equal what I is. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So, can I convince you that I equals I1 plus I2? Right? The, the, the end amp, what I'm saying here is the, M, the end current is equal to the current of one path plus the current of the other path. Yes. Yeah. And in this case, the currents are different because the resistance might be different. Okay, so if the so resistance was the same in, in both of them, then those currents would be the same. Yeah, we just but, but for now, those currents are different. Okay. So V equals I R for both of them. For both of them. I agree. So oh so you're just saying that I I one R one equals I two R two. I equals can I change it to E equals I R? E equals I R. I equals E over R. And so I1 would equal E over R1. I2 would equal E over R2. Are we cool with that? Yeah. Kalana? Yeah. All right, now I'm going to plug them into here. So what I'm saying is I times I is equal to E over R1 plus E over R2. I is equal to E over R1 plus E over R2. Okay, I'm going to factor out an E. So I have I is equal to E times 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. I'm going to divide through that E. E or oh, I over E is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Well, it's kind of... What are we trying to find? That's a great question. Because yeah, we, we don't know the I's, but we know the... We're finding the individual current. No, we're not finding the individual current. What are we trying to find? What was the goal of this game? The goal of this game was to figure out an, equi an equation for the equivalent the resistance. Oh, we're bringing in the equivalent stuff. Yes, we're trying to figure out what the equivalent resistance is. Do you understand what I'm getting at here? Yeah. All right. And, and, and we know an equation for the series circuit. It's very easy. Sigma. You just add them up. What we don't know is the equation for the equivalent circuit if they were in parallel. 
and I'm going. I'm I'm taking the very, the a very slow route to get there, but I want I want you guys to wrestle with this. And the reason, and, and as I started my class off, excuse me. The reason being is because this has applications beyond just electricity. This this rears its ugly head when you're talking about water flow, diameter of pipes, Mister Navy. You're gonna be going into like on a battleship, and you're gonna have like water flowing or air flowing or traffic flowing. You want to be some kind of engineer. This is kind of applicable to what you do, even though you might not see it now. But actually, I feel like I'm going over this so in such great detail that you kind of I'm showing you basically all the applications as much as I can right now. Anyway, we know that E equals I R, right? But that's not what we have. We have I over E. What is I over E? Let's let's solve this until we get I over E. Does it really? I got E over I equals R. I agree with you. It equals 1 over R. I over E is equal to 1 over R. You guys agree? All I did was I flipped over both sides. So, and what is this R, by the way? This is the equivalent, this is the total resistance, the equivalent resistance. So, here's my new equation. I over E is the same as 1 over R equivalent. No, we can't flip them over. Here's your equation, I'll tell you it right now. When you add resistors in parallel, the inverse of your equivalent resistance is equal to the, the sum of the inverses. I know that sounds crazy, but when I write it down, you're like, oh, I get it. No, and you cannot invert that. I'll tell you why you can't invert that. Okay, let's do this. Fine, we'll, 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 we'll do it. All right, write this equation down in your mind. And, and what I did was I added up like four resistors in parallel, apparently. Okay, but I mean, you can keep going. I, I, I could put a dot, dot, dot. Or you could have less of them if you only have two resistors. Okay, mathematically speaking, let's work with just two resistors in parallel. Well, what, what Victor is saying is can't I just raise these both to the negative one power? That would make me R equivalent is equal to R1 plus R2. Is that what you're saying, Victor? Yeah. Because mathematically, you're totally wrong. All right, I'll tell you what, fine. You don't see it yet? You see it? Like, this is kind of a crucial, this is algebra 2. We're not doing physics here, we're doing algebra 2. Oh, no, no. Yes, this would be it's the equation for a series, and that's not right. So we should be able to do the No, you cannot just distribute to the new. Let me ask you this, Victor. And this can be for anyone, but let me ask you guys this. If I have R1 plus R2 squared. What is that equal to? What? Less two R one R two. Whoa! Wait, it's not it's it's not equal to R one squared plus R two squared? Why not? Well yeah, well because No, no, this is just straight up math. This is not like fancy math. Right, this is A plus B squared. R1 squared plus 2 R1 R2 plus R2 squared. Okay, so you, you, what you're talking about is there's a cross term that we missed in there, right? Is that what you're saying? Because I'm going to. Do you understand what we're getting at, Kalena? Or at least do you understand what I've said so far? Let's do it. 
Yeah. Okay, good. Because I actually remember at one point in my life telling Austin when he was a little like kid three years ago that if you have A plus B and you try to square that, that is not A squared plus B squared. And I literally use the words, I will boot you in the face. You remember when we said that? I will boot you in the face if you do this. Apparently this worked because you remembered and you were like, no, that doesn't work. Obviously it doesn't work, right? Because there's cross terms. Now, what I'm saying here is equivalently, Victor, you were saying kind of the same thing. You're saying, hey, if I raise this to the negative one power, that's just one over R1 to the negative one power plus one over R2 to the negative one power. Yeah. And then you're just flipping both of those up, and then yes, it will be R equivalent is equal to R1 plus R2. But you can't do that now, oh, right? Because yes, you can't yes, just distribute that you know, exponent into there. What you would have to do is you would have to invert this. Now, how do I invert this? Well, I'm going to show you guys something, and then I'm going to show you how to solve it, and you guys will be like, wow, solving is a lot easier than this theory. Although this theory isn't that bad. Although I'm excited about how we're doing it. But let's go. How would you invert this? Because we know that this inverse is just our equivalent, which is what we want to solve for. You guys see what I mean? How would I invert this? Well, I would just put it over 1. But, how would I get that into a nicer expression? Well, what I would do is I would make it this. Uh, R2 over R1 times R2. Plus R1 over R1 times R2. You guys agree? What did I do? R2 multiply one You multiplied R1. I might have split the first one by R2 over R2. I might split the second one by R1 over R1. Why would I do something crazy like that? To put together. To get the denominators the same. Yes. So, because I have equivalent denominators, I can add them. So now I have 1 over R2 plus R1 divided by R1 times R2. Now what can I do? I have a fraction, which... 1 over 1 is not really a fraction, but I have a something divided by a fraction. When I have the fraction in the denominator, I can take that stuff in the denominator and flip it. So our equivalent, my friends, is really R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2. Let's check that. Let's pretend that we check that. All right, so let's try that. What if they were both 100? 100 times 100 is what? 10,000. Wait, what? Isn't it? It's 1,000. No, 10,000. 10,000. 100 times 100? Yeah, 10,000. Divided by 100 plus 100, 200. Right? What is 10,000 divided by 200? So the, the zeros would cancel. I got 100 divided by 2. I get if R1 and R2 were 100 ohms each, my resistance would be 50 ohms equivalent. Why would anyone want to solve that? You mean plug it into this equation? Plug it into what we had. Plug it into this equation? It's the same thing with the whole map. Well, this is the. This is, this is actually giving you the equation. One, the inverse of our equivalent. That's not really what we were looking for. We were really looking for the our equivalent. Although when I memorize equations, I would memorize this one. Because and, the, and what that will give you is you say, okay, fine. What is our equivalent? Is equal to one over hundred plus one over hundred, which is equal to two over hundred, which is equal to one over fifty. Two over hundred. Okay. Yeah, because one plus one is two. Yeah. Over hundred, which is one over fifty. And then you in, after you get that answer, you invert both of them and you say, oh, okay, our equivalent is equal to 50. I don't know. Either way, you guys memorize it. It's, I mean, they're good, but I'm just saying. That's how you do that. It's not really that bad. When you do problems, you just be like, oh, wait, this is actually kind of easy. I was like, let's do one just because. 
No, because you guys are all freaked out about it. Let's try it. Alright. What is a... I got a circle, okay? I have a resistor on that circle. I got another resistor on that circuit, and I got another resistor on that circuit. This <laughs> resistor is 250. This resistor is 150. This resistor is 350 ohms. So they're all on the parallel. They're all on the parallel. They're all on the parallel. Okay. As soon as you want to do three Yeah. What's the equivalent resistance? So you just know that 1 over R equivalent is equal to 1 over 250 plus 1 over 150 plus 1 over 350. Oh, and then you solve that, and then you invert it. But, but this way the other one would be easier because you're just adding up the numbers, right? S solving that is a little bit tough because you have to find a common denominator. Yeah, this one you have to find a common denominator. Well, yeah, the, all of them you have to find a common denominator. How about the R2? Oh, wait. wait. No, no. You don't just add the denominators. You know how to add fractions. We're adding fractions here. This is like one half plus one fifth plus one eight or one third. That's not going to give you one over eleven. Wouldn't the other one just be R one times R two plus R three over R one plus R two plus R three? Actually, yeah. If if you did it, the, if you use that other equation that I gave you, it would essentially be 250 times 150 times 350 divided by 250 plus 150 plus 350. Plug that into your calculator and you get 74. Sure, it's the same thing. Same thing, yeah. Do you guys believe me? Yeah. Let's do it. I believe you. No, Too no, I, I want you <laughs> to not believe me. Don't ever, don't always believe me. 250 times 150 times 350 divided by 250 or 250 plus. 150 plus 350 is equal to, I didn't get 74. What's nonsense? Because Google doesn't like to work. No, I got 175, 100. It's a lot of ohms. It's not an incredible amount of ohms, but it, it's a lot of ohms. All right, all right, I'll tell you what. Why don't we do it this way? Then? Why don't I do this? All right, 175, zero, zero, okay? Remember that one. So now I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do 1 divided by, oops, oops. No, that's not what I want. Uh, there we go. Okay, 1 divided by plus 1 divided by that. plus 1 divided by that. I'm going to ask the calculator, what is that? 0 0.13, or 0 0.013, blah, blah, blah. Okay? But I want to take that, and I want to raise it to the negative 1. Right? Because I want the inverse of that. 73.94. Okay? Wait, I think I know what it, it is. Um, I, I think I know what I got wrong. Let me try something. Let me go back to that other one. I almost feel like this. One half. Now 
that won't work. I, I know what we did wrong, and I think that my answer is no, you cannot just multiply all the tops together and divide by the thing. In fact, I, I think I know what it is, is you have to do you have to do this. 150 times 250 150 times 350 so 150 is 250 times 350 and this one is 150 times 250. 74. Same answer. Do you want to know what happened? Yes. I, I figured it out. And it's mathemat I mean, you kind of have to think about it mathematically. Essentially, you, you do this. Uh, Hold on, by the way, this is advanced. Uh, I'm just doing this because I realize that this won't work. You don't just multiply the things and add them up. You actually have to, you actually have to multiply them out and then um, you add, what you add up is you add up 150 times 350 uh, plus 350 times 250 plus 150 times 250. Here's the reason why. Because uh, this equation here works fine for adding two resistors in parallel. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why, and, and once you see it, you, you, you'll get it, but... Say that I have three resistors. In fact, can I just label one resistor two, one, and three? All right, so I have... I have two times one times three, and don't actually think of this as the number two times it's one times three. three. I'm just adding the, you know, they're, they're, they're resistor one, resistor two, and resistor three. Essentially, I'm going to go one over R is equal to one over two plus one over... 1 plus 1 over 3, right? I want to figure out, I want to figure out the, uh, I want to add these together. So in order to do that common denominator, I would go 2 times 1 times 3 is my common denominator, right? And this one, what is missing from the, what is missing? So it would be 1 times 3. And this one, it would be 2 times 3. And this one, it would be 2 times 1. You get it? And then you flip it over. So that's why I had to do 250 times 150 times 350 plus 1 times 3 plus 2 times 3 plus 2 times 1. I, I can't just add up just the resistors. I have to add up kind of like the pairs that are missing. Stuff that they yeah, yeah. I just, I would, I honestly would memorize this equation because, because figuring it out, you know, what I mean, is more complex, more complicated. No, it's not that it's more complicated. That it's just actually, actually, that's way simpler to add up resistors in parallel. The inverse equivalent is equal to the addition, the addition of all of the inverses. I know, it's a weird to say, and it's weird to try to memorize, but once you see it, it's like, I get it. I can see this. Yeah, I, I guess if you wanted a formula for this, you would, you would write down how... Yeah, let's see. Formula that they write is this. 1 over R equivalent is equal to sigma of 1 over R. There's your formula. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. How do you guys feel? I know I went slowly through like four, five pages on it. Much sense. But I feel like I, I wanted to make sure you guys caught it. Because this is I don't know I feel good about this lecture. All right. The next thing we're going to cover is we're going to talk about Christmas lights and so we're going to talk about how to add like what if we have in our circuit before it hit after it leaves the battery but before it hits the battery again. What if we have some resistors in parallel and some resistors in series and all of that kind of stuff? Yeah. And then the hard part, the thing that makes it really funky, is what if we add capacitors to this thing? 
Then that's going to be really crazy. Well, essentially, what needs to come into the battery is the same voltage, and what needs to come into the battery is the same current. So that's how I would play this game. For example, like when we had our resistors in parallel, we knew that it had to leave this thing at a current I, and it had to come into this thing with the same current I. Although, it doesn't mean that the same current I is going to here, or here, or here. I actually have a feeling that the I2 is going to be the biggest, has the least resistance, I3 is going to be the smallest. But I do know that after they, meet, after they leave here, they have to meet up again right in here, this junction point, right? And then that current is, has to add up to the same amount of current that left the battery initially. And we didn't lose electrons on the way. Are we? Yeah, the same amount of cars leaving this garage apparently is the same amount of cars going into this garage. So, apparently, whatever. They all remain the same. Yeah. All of this stuff has remained the same. There's no sense order. It, um, there is the resistance related to it. That it's very really different. By the way, I have a question for you. What if I had a wire that I connected from here to here? No resistance, just a straight wire. Yeah. Everything would bypass those resistors. I, what I did was essentially what I call short circuiting the circuit. I bypassed those resist these resistors, and I just said, "All right, fine. Which path do you want to choose? The one with 150 steps, 350 steps, 250 steps, or no steps? Right? And everything is going to go through that one with the no steps. And basically, if these were three light bulbs, they would all turn off. Right. So if you had a light bulb, and then you, what you did is before it hit the light bulb, you connected the wires. I would short circuit the, the circuit and the light bulb would turn off. Oh, so is that like how you can use like, it's like a warning light? If you break the circuit, then the light comes on. Yeah, yeah, you can do the opposite of it and make it a warning light. Yeah. 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 And the current will all flow through that wire. And it'll be like, oh, that's the least amount of stuff. I'm down with that. That's the wire. Yeah, the voltage doesn't drop. So if it keeps going through the battery, it just keeps going through the wire. Yeah. Okay, alright. I'll see you guys later. Logic! Mm -hmm.